Hi, so thanks for watching. So what we're going to be doing across this video is changing in this part of the stairway we're going to be changing the original spindles which are these square ones um, for the moulded ones, or rounded ones, or whatever you want to call them. Um, and then in the upper part of the staircase we're going to be putting it in from scratch. So I'll show you what I mean. So this is probably the easier bit. So on this part of the staircase we need to take these spindles out. We need to put a bottom rail in, which I've got the pine bottom rail upstairs and I'll show you in a minute. And then at the top here we're going to need to, to do a bit of notching to put the new spindles uh, in. So this is going to be the second part of the video. This part of the banister I've had to take out when I've installed the new attic staircase. And if you're interested in the attic staircase installation, there's another video on that, so you can have a look at that. So here, we need to reinstate the original handrail across to where the loft stairs start. New spindles, new bottom rail. And then on the attic stairs, we need the bottom rail, the handrail, and the spindles. So we've got everything to do on this one. So at the minute, I'm in the process of cutting the um, bottom rails to, to go in. Just started there, I've cut that one, cut one of the ones on the back. Um, so I'm gonna cut all the bottom rails. So I've got this one in the middle to finish off, this one here to do. And um, then I'm gonna cut the handrail. Then I'm gonna install that bit. And then we'll look at putting the spindles in. Um, so the handrail I've got, this is for the 32 mil spindles, which um, we wanted. So that's the bottom rail, and then there's this insert that goes in. And the theory is you have your bit of insert, spindle, bit more insert, spindle. Obviously, this is just a very small piece for this little riser here. But on the long run, you'll, you'll see a bit better. So we'll talk about how we work out the correct angles and spacings and stuff as the video goes on. Um, and I'll show you where I'm cutting the wood upstairs. Just got set up in the loft to cut the wood, so I've got me um, chop saw there. Uh, I've got that set up to the angles, and I'm just cutting it as I go along. So, on on this attic staircase, it did come with a handrail and a bottom rail, but once it came, we didn't like it because it, it's it's not a very good match with the original stuff. And um, so we've bought this pine one from Wix. It's still not a hundred percent match. It's this this new one's a lot thinner. Um, but it's a lot better match than the stuff that we got with the staircase, so we're, go we're going to go with this. So to get the angles for this staircase, all I've been doing is it came with the manufactured bottom rail and handrail, and basically I've been transferring them angles across to the chop saw and cutting them. So for this part, it's quite easy. Once we get to the original sta staircase, We'll need to take some angles, so I'll show you how I do that once we get to that bit. But for now, I've got these last couple of bits of um, bottom rail to cut, and then I'll go on to cutting some of the handrail. I speeded this bit up because it's a bit loud with the saw going, so you can't really hear what I was saying. But um, all I'm doing is just cutting the um, base rail and the handrail and the infills all the same way with the chop saw. I'm using the stuff that came with the staircase as a bit of a template. But um, you can obviously use a set square or an angle or whatever you want to use. Even an app on the phone to get, to get the angle and the pitch of your staircase. And then just transfer the measurements across to the, the new wood. And then uh, get it chopped off. And I found this worked really well throughout. So uh, um, yeah, it's the easiest way to do it and it's what I'd recommend. Now I've cut the handrail, what I've done is I've put the base rail on. Um, all I did to put the base rail on was a row of wood glue on the bottom and then some little pin tacks just to hold it on so that's nice and solidly on. So what I'm going to do now is start securing the handrail on. Um, it's going to go in between the two holes like that. So what I've done is I've drawn a centre mark across where the hole is and a hole up and down. I've got these wood grab screws have got like a torex head and uh, I want to try using these first they actually came for the thicker banister so I just need to take it easy and just make sure we have got the, 
the correct depth and stuff on these, otherwise I'll have to uh, go and get some alternatives from screw fix off in the garage, but I'll try one of these first. So what I'm going to do is aim for the screw to come through in the centre where that is. So I've got, I've got my sort of mark on here, so I can centre up, get it in the centre like that, and then uh, we'll go from there. In fact, looking at that, I think them screws might be a bit, a bit long. So what I'm going to do is go and get the alternative ones and just have a look at them and then I'll tell you what I decide. I've gone for it. I've gone for a wood screw. I've got a washer, slightly bigger, over the end, through the hole. I've put plenty of me wood glue on. It's the Evo stick, the exterior one, so super sticky and super good. Put that on. Screw through, screw through, put a centre mark, so I'll centre them all up to the same position and then it's nicely on. I don't want it too much because the glue hasn't set, but it's solid as it is anyway. And then once it gets all the uh, spindles in, that's going to tie it all together even more. I'll be gluing all the spindles as well, so hopefully by the time it's all done, it's not going to go anywhere. So I'll do the rest of it, and then once I've done it, I'll give you a, a shot of it, but it, it's basically... It's the same all the time, so glue, glue, screw, screw, and just making sure it's all nicely centred up. I just thought I'd talk to you, talk you through where we're at, where we are up to now. So just to recap, I've got the base plate on, it's glued down and tacked down. Um, I've put the first couple of spindles in. Uh, what I did, spindle height, so I've measured from the bottom up to the top. I've got my angle. Um, to get the angle, like I say, it is on the document, this pitch is uh, 42 degrees. That is on the drawing I got when I ordered the staircase. And I've also got an app on my phone. I put that on and that says 42. And I have got a, an angle finder as well. And that says 42, so they all say the same. So I then went to my chop saw, cut the 42 degree um, angle. And the sort of a, a pause inside, if you know what I mean. Um, 42 degrees on the infills. Uh, I found a website on the internet and I'll put a, a screenshot of it on now. So you can see what that website looks like. But um, basically, I put the length of my gap in, the angle, um, the size of my spindles and it tells you the spacings and everything to do, so it's quite a good website. And then from there, so I put infill in, spindle in, spindle in. And then what I'll do is be um, glue, tack, loads of glue. And I'll be also putting the infill in the top, so they go along. But I don't want to get that sort of far with it at the minute. I just want to put them all in for the full staircase. Just make sure I'm happy with everything. Don't want to move anything about. Pinch a spindle from here to go there and that type of thing. If anything happens anywhere. So literally, they're all just going in sort of hand tight for now. Um, we'll finish the full staircase and then we'll, we'll come back. And we'll sort of properly sort of level them all up. If we need to do any minor adjustments and what have you. We'll do that. And then so the next thing I'm going to do is I need to this banister needs to be reinstated across and tie in to over here so I'm just going to talk about the options that I've gotten I might say I'm going to do one thing and change my mind but I'll, I'll talk you through what I'm thinking and we'll go from there there's maybe several options but the, the options are sort of thought of was one, just put another post there, in front of this, um, it'll be independent of this, bring the banister rail across into there. So it's going to look like that, and then obviously you'd have your spindles going down, so that was one option. The other option, I've got these square spindles, I thought I could put three of them together. So I'll put them in, in line with where that is, 
um, and then obviously probably be a spindle, the three together, the handrail will tie into them and then the rest spindle. Um, so there, there be sort of two options. When we've looked at it, what I thought I might do is I've got this piece of wood here, which as you can see is miles too big. But I think what I'll do is I'll take this to my bench saw, I'll chop it down so I can get me 32, um, get me I think it's 80 mil for the width, and just put a solid piece of wood sort of in, in where the spindles are. Um, and I think that's going to look the neatest. So when I do that, we'll have a look at it and see. And like I say, I might change my mind about it. If I don't like the look of it, um, I might go back to the drawing board with it. Might end up putting a post in there. Um, so I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose another option would have been the handrail and put a bend in it and stuff, but then it's how you tie it into this post. There's sort of endless options. It's really just what looks the best. And I think once it's all nicely painted at the end, you've got your spindles, the handrails going and the rest of the spindles, I think it'll just sort of look like it's, it's meant to be like that and it'll just look like the post that's there. So probably will look the best in the long run, but we'll, we'll see how we go with that. Just out in the garage at the minute, and what I've got here is a section of banister of the original banister that we're going to put in upstairs. Now, the problem is the groove in this original banister is less than um, the 32mm that we need for the uh, new spindles. So just with the router I've got here, I'm just going to try and slightly make that a little bit wider just so we can get these in. So so I'll give you a little bit of footage of how I, how I do that. So there we are. I need to um, get the paint off and stuff, but you can see they're nice square coat and that's 32 mil now. So we'll easily get the um, get the new spindles in. Where we're at, we're at, at the minute is um, we've got these spindles in over here, and these are in properly now. So it's infill, which is glued and tacked. There's infills under the top there. Sorry about the camera work, but just see and see what's happened. So infills glued the top, I haven't tacked them as much at the top, I've tacked the first couple and then at the bottom infills are glued and tacked. We then come to this piece of wood which is glued, glued, screwed through, screwed through and screwed through at the bottom which goes into this main timber um, and I'll show you what this is going to do, it doesn't look too pretty at the minute but once it's all tidied up it should all look nice and it's probably the best of a uh, you know the situation the best of a bad time is we're going to try and reinstate the original piece of banister across here so this might need trimming down slightly but the theory is that's going to come across to there be level with the top of there and that'll give us a nice solid place to, to fix it into and then we can drop the spindles down the other option we had was putting a, not bothering with the um, spindle type wood and putting a solid piece up there um, but when we've looked at both options we think that looks the best um, but at the end of the day we'll put it in if we're not happy with how it looks we'll take it back out and it's easy enough to change it just i mean taking these couple out and sort of sorting a bit out so it's not a massive issue but i think i think that will look the best so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the bottom rail on for the spindles onto the floor and um, get that nicely leveled up and um, there's a little miter to do on that corner so i'll do that and then once I've done that, I'll put this on. I won't actually fix anything. We'll then make sure that when we put the spindles in, they're going to be level. We'll fix the top rail, fix the bottom rail, and then we'll start putting these spindles in. These ones should be fairly straightforward because there's just straight cuts. Um, and I'll be going on my calculator, I showed you earlier, to work out the spacings and all that type of thing. So, a bit cracked on to see how it goes. Right, so where we're at now is I've tied this existing bit of banister into the new staircase. I'll give you a bit of a close-up shot of how we've done it, but as we were saying earlier, there's a few options, so we could have put a piece of wood up, a bit of piece of wood across. In the end, I've, um, I've put a bit of timber down. Um, all these spacings have sort of been made around this, um, and then I've just cut it to, to match the shape. So hopefully once it's all sanded in, painted in, that'll just look like a solid piece going through. 
solid piece of timber down that's then fixed down into this original. I mean, it's really strong, like there's no way that'll go anywhere. Um, and then we're going to put the spindles in on this piece. So again, I've been back to my online calculator. It's told me for, for the gap that I made, um, I think there's 74 millimetres between each sort of spindle. So I've, uh, I've had them in, I've sort of had them in once, um, dry, just to make sure they all go in and everything. Once we were happy with them and sort of making sure they're all the same level through and everything. I've now took them back out. I've cut some in fills. Um, these are ones for me that I've cut the other wrong size the other day, but I've just tidied them up so they're the right size now. And we'll, we'll put them in. Uh, so they'll just sort of slide in like that. They'll get glued and um, tapped probably. And then we'll, we'll go from that. At the top, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do at the top as far as infill goes. Um, possibly I might have to machine a bit of wood or uh, I might just do it with filler or we might just leave it glued in. We'll sort of see what it looks like. But for now, if I can get them glued in so they won't go anywhere, get the infills in at the bottom, um, worry about sort of have a think about what's happening there uh, as time goes on. I have, when I've took them out just now, I've, I've renumbered them so they're going to go in in the exact position that they were dry fitted in. It shouldn't really make a difference because you all should be the same in theory, but just in case it looked fine and it all measured fine, so done that. Um, so I've fixed this down, just measured it, um, I've tacked it down and then I've screwed it down and then it turns around the corner there, so I'll give you a bit of a close up there, but I've, I've just put a little mitre on that. Um, so this one is glued in, um, and that end one's glued in, and now, like I say, I'm just going to fill the gap in. Then once this bit's done, we'll do that, that riser up and down stairs, and then that's it all done really then. A um, bit of wood filler in places where, like I say, where I put this block in and, and stuff, but um, be getting there. <laughs> So just a bit of a close up now so you can see, see there, there's the angle coming around there. I've just did that with the mitre saw and that's because of this rounded piece up here. So I've literally put that where the original one was. So I've put that one in as my starting point. I've then got one here and um, that pencil mark down there, that mark is that, that allowing for a gap when the stud work's gonna go across to infilling down there. And then like I say on the calculator, I've, I've worked out from that second mark there, across to there, and that's told me how many pieces I need. I think it's 14 at um, 74, 75 mil apart, whatever it was. Um, but it, it all works it out on the calculator, so it's fairly straightforward, um, like I say. We'll now get them sort of fixed in, glued in, and uh, hopefully that's another job done. Right, so here we are. Um, I've got the remaining spindles in there. You can see, I'll have a little walk along. You can see. So that's it from the landing side. This is what I was talking about, where it ties in. So I've cut this piece of timber, the same profile as this piece. Obviously this is all gonna be colored one one colour when it's decorated. So I'll put some wood filler in there, sand it. Um, there's also this joint I to remake here. So again, I need a bit of wood filler and sand them, but you'll never know. So that's it looking along from the stairs. So again, where it fixes in, I'll need a bit of wood filler, but it's, it's gonna look really good, I think. I think it looks better than bringing a solid piece up here. And it is really, really solid. So the bottom there, we've got the infill pieces in. The top, for now, they're just going to the groove underneath. Uh, I may or may not put infill pieces in there. I haven't quite decided yet. So, I'll... so this is just it from the other side. And again, you can see we've got the rail along the bottom there. And that's the mitered edge. So we've got the mitre cut down the bottom there that you can just see me pointing out. 
um, comes up nicely. So that's that section done for now. The next piece is the main run and then really after that it, it is there or thereabouts which will be the filling and tidying up so so this section of the video we're going to look at the lower part of the staircase so as you can see we've uh, still got the spare uh, spare we've still got the square spindles in this section of the staircase yeah, from this angle as well so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to take these out we're going to put the spindle rail in the bottom and then we're going to have a look at how we're going to dress them in at the top. So, first job, I'll get these out and then um, I'll give you a bit of an update of how I think we're going to get them, them in. I'm going to remove the existing spindles first. I don't want to damage anything else, so I'm not too sure how these are fixed in, to be honest. Um, what I'm going to do is get a hammer. I'm assuming they're tacked in there, so I think we're going to hammer. Tap it that way. And then just get one out then once one's out, hopefully they'll all come out. So I'll go and get my hammer and see how we go. And they are just tacked, so that one's come out. There's absolutely no damage to the staircase at all there. Uh, um, and I think the more you get out, the easier it'll be, hopefully. And these will just have to go to the tip. Um, or the ones that aren't painted, possibly cut up for firewood, but the, the ones that are painted will just have to go to the tip. Now I've took the spindles out, what I'm going to do is put this bottom rail in. Um, it's similar to the bottom rail we put on on the other parts of the staircase, or it's the same as the bottom rail we put on on the other step parts of the staircase. So I'm going to measure from end to end. Put the mitre cuts in, it's a 42 degree angle this I think, but I'll, I'll double check that. Um, we'll go and put them there, put them cuts in, and then go from there. And then in the meantime, on the underside of here, which I'll give you a close up of. Not the best light, but this um, this is less than 32 mil thick, so we're gonna have to take a little bit out of the top of the spindles. I'll decide how to do that when we come to it. But in the meantime, at least you're just gonna scrape the paint off it now. While well, there's nothing in, because I think it'll be easier to get the remaining paint off now before putting the spindles in, and then have to try and scrape off round them. So she's got about ten minutes while I go and do the mitres, and then um, we'll be starting putting them in. I'm hoping once I've cut one, it's the same distance. I can use that as a template, cut a load, and then come and fit them. That's the hope, anyway. So Alicia's just on burning off the underside of the handrail, and then once she's done that, we'll get this base rail on. Uh, we'll we'll uh, then look at measuring some spindles and doing the nice bit. Right, so what we've done is now I've cut a template spindle. So we've got the bottom rail in. Um, it's tacked all the way up. There's wood glue under it and I've put some screws and it's slightly bent when I put it on. So at the very top I've got a couple of clamps at the minute. Just hold it nice and straight but it's gone on alright. Um, so that's fine. So what I've done spindle wise I've measured from the top to the bottom and then because of how the existing groove is in the in the handrail uh, it'd be difficult to get a router in to sort of square it up and make it the same width as that so what I'm going to do instead is take a little piece out of the spindles and I think once it's all all on and painted I think that'll look the best all round so I've done one spindle I want to make sure the same spindle does the full length and if it's the same everywhere I'll then go away and cut a lot, of, cut a lot of them, and then come and put them in one go. As far as spacings and stuff go, I, I I showed you the calculator I used earlier on in the video. I'll be using that same calculator to calculate them, and then what I'll do is I'll cut them all, come down, roughly put them all in, make sure they look right, and then take them out and just properly fix them in one at a time, which is basically what we've done everywhere else. I thought I'd better just show you from this angle. You see that in the cover there. So just from this angle, just pushing it in. You can see it sort of needs to fit in that existing gap, but that existing gap isn't square for some reason. It's like offset, which must have been to do with the original spindles. But by me putting the cut in like that, it's going to get a good solid fix. And I'll probably 
put our infill of wood in there and then it'll all be nice and flush when we come to decorate. For now it'll be the infills at the bottom, infill top, glue, glue and possibly a tack if I can get a tack in nice and easy. So that's, that's how we're doing that. I'm just working my way up putting the spindles on. Just dry fitting them at the minute so I've cut my groove out like I said earlier. Come to the website they need to be 76 millimetres spaced. So literally what I'm doing is putting the bottom end in, top end, got my tape measure, 76, spirit level. And so on. And I'm gonna dry, like I said, I'm gonna dry fit them all the way up and then go back and put the infills in and properly secure them. But I just want to dry fit them just to me. I don't want to get to the end and find the gap's different or something like that. So I think this is the best way to do it. And also any bit of trimming and stuff and tying up as we go along, I can just do it as I'm going, which works out well. So I'm now at a position where all the spindles are dry fitted in. So they're just pushed in, they're near enough spaced out but they haven't got the bottom infills in, they're not glued or anything like that. So I'm going to leave it at this for tonight, it's, uh, it's now sort of Saturday evening, so I'm going to leave it at this for tonight. And then tomorrow morning I'll do the, uh, we'll get some footage of doing the infills, gluing them in and getting them all properly levelled up. But I know by doing this they're all going to go in, the spacing's right so it's, it's a, I think it's a good idea to do it like this and then um, and then fix them permanently. It's obviously it's a bit more of a time consuming but at least as uh, you're not going to get to the very end and find your, your gaps significantly different at one end or the other. Right so just so you can see I've now put the infill bits in. Nothing's screwed or fixed in yet. I've got my little tacks. So I've got my tacks there. Got me wood glue, same stuff I've used earlier on. Tacks are exactly the same, 40 by 1.6 millimeter pin screws. Not nothing's like I say, nothing's screwed in yet. What I've done is I've gone from top to bottom, putting the infills in, making sure the gaps are all the same. And I don't know how, but that last one is about two or three millimeters different, but you can't actually tell, so we're gonna go with it. But the infills are all as per the website, so I'm happy with that. I don't think it helps that the posts are slightly tapered, so it's a bit hard to get a, an accurate measurement. But anyway, so put them all in loosely, happy they all fit, happy everything. So what I'm gonna do now is work my way up, properly fixing them in, and then we'll get Alicia just standing and looking and just sighting them, just to make sure there's nothing glaringly obviously going wrong as we go, because once they're glued and nailed in, Obviously don't want to have to try and take them out again. So this is where I'm going to leave this video. As you can see, um, it's all finished. So I've got the infills in now, the glued in. Um, I'll take you for a final look round. So that's the main stair run, and just if you're interested, that's the uh, underneath. So like you've seen on the earlier video, it's notched in. I probably will put some infills in, but that won't be till we're sort of trimming up right down the line. So you probably see that in one of the decorating videos. Then come down to the main run. You'll notice this gap is bigger on these than the main stair run, but um, the reason for that is obviously this gap from floor, finished floor level to the banister rail is a lot different, so we've just had to make it fit the best we can. Um, so it comes along, again the infills are in. This one, if you remember, this handrail I could take off, so I routed this out, which you've seen earlier on in the video, so that's that, and again it'll either get infill or wood filler when we come to the decorating stage. 
We've then got up into the original attic staircase. This is probably going to be changed for a round new post topper if I can actually find one. Um, anyway, this is all glued and the same at the top. These ones are um, fixed in at the bottom, but they're not fixed in at the top yet because we're going to need to get some plaster behind them, get it skim behind them. So I've just left them ones fairly loose so they'll come out so the lads can skim behind them and then I'll, I'll fix them in at the very end. And then this little final section and we're then in the loft. So the next tasks are going to be, I'm going to be plasterboarding the underneath of this new staircase we stood on. I'm going to be putting a doorway, a door sorry, into the loft and trimming up the timbers around the edge of that. Um, so then videos will all be coming out in the next few months. Um, so please like on here, subscribe on here on YouTube and um, put the notification thing on. Any questions, comments, feel free to ask. Um, and then if you go across to Instagram, renovating underscore vein underscore cottage, if you follow us on there, um, we tend to put more frequent updates on Instagram, so we'll just put an odd daft video on now and again, whereas the videos on here tend to be maybe one a month or so. so. Um, but like I say, there's loads to come, and then once all this sort of major building work's done, um, we'll be then on the decorating, cladding, panelling, all sorts, so there'll be, and then sort of the final paint and stuff, which will probably get more, more of a leash you doing that, but... Um, Hopefully that will all be coming up over the coming year. So, like I say, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.